This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. Ladybug walk. This ladybug should only move when the mouse is near the bottom of the screen. Okay. You're going to use a conditional, which is an if statement, to make sure the ladybug only moves when the mouse is near the bottom of the screen. Do this. Use an if block to check whether the position of mouse world dot mouse y, yeah, the y position. Notice it tells you x and y here. I can also do it this way or show the grid, right? So is below a certain point. Use an if block to check whether mouse dot y is below a certain point, okay? Add code using the counter pattern to increase the bug x to move it. Got it? The bug should only move if, if, if the mouse pointer is near the bottom of the screen. Let's see. So it looks like they did it like this tree line maybe. All right, so let's do run. And what point is that? I'm gonna say maybe 275 for y. We're looking at y because we're going towards the ground. So I'll say 275, I guess. And they told us flat out we need an if statement. We could work on the counter pattern first. So, ooh. We could work on the counter pattern first. And remember, don't let that scare you. They're not, what it means is we want to add to the old value. So what do we have? We have a bug. So I just grab bug or sprite x. And I'm going to do bug.x is equal to bug.x plus 1. And that will be the speed. Let me double check here. Yep, okay. So notice the bug is already here. <laughs> Where's that run? We can't even see it move. It goes so, oh, whoops. That's because I did an equals. <laughs> that makes sense. Let me try that again. Oh, and now I'm going the wrong way. So, because if you look at X, let me pull it across, X decreases. All right, let's try that again. And this is what the counter pattern is, which we've seen it a lot, but let's just talk about it real quick. There we are. What's happening here? The draw loop runs 30 times a second. What this code does is th we're telling the computer, hey, the bug's x value, we're about to go off the screen, the bug's x value has a new value. What is it? Well, bug x is now equal to whatever bug x used to be equal to. So if we just started, bug x is 350. So 350 minus 1. Well, 350 minus 1 is 349. The bug's new x value is 349. We hit the bottom. We go back to the top. We redraw the sprite. Well, the bug now has a 349x value, so it looks like it moved over a bit. And then we hit this again. Okay, bug x has a new value. What is it? It's equal to the old value. Okay, well, what was the old value? We just said 349. 349 minus 1 is 348. And it gives the illusion of movement because this runs so often. But we want to make it so the bug only moves if something's happening. So I'm going to head into the controls and go into if. Now, if what? Well, first, let me move my counter pattern. If something happens, if mouse, they said, is near the ground, so that would be the mouse's y value. Let me say, uh, and keep in mind, y value goes up as you go down, right? So if mouse is greater. So if the mouse's y value is greater, and I was thinking the tree line was about 275, maybe. And so now what will happen? Well, if the mouse's y value is greater than 275, if my mouse is down here somewhere, somewhere, then this chunk of code runs. Then the counter pattern will happen and my bug's x value changes. So if this is true, this code runs. Then it keeps going. If this is false, that's fine. Maybe my mouse is way up here. If this is false, that's fine. It just skips over the code in this and keeps going. Let's see. Mouse is way up here. Rah! Up here, rah, up here, rah. and we can even mess with movement. Maybe I want to do this at I don't know, 50, and I'm going to double my bug speed. <laughs> Add code. Yeah, perfect. But uh, onward.